boxing life here. Yeah. DJ boxing life here. Yeah. Busted Douglas, knock them out. Busted Douglas, the fat bump, the slow legend, I mean. Yo, this is Chris Caban, chilling with my man DJ Boxing Live, one of the hottest, dopest boxing channels on YouTube. Check him out. Some rounds on the EJ Live YouTube channel. And Sophia was uh, the number 10 rating contender, and he had never been knocked down. And Sonny destroyed his mouth. Sophia lost most of his teeth, basically with one or two left hooks. Oh, shit, boy. What was look at kids sleeping like Manny Pacquiao? EJ Boxing Live here. EJ Boxing Live here. All right, I'm here with Boxing Beast and Ryan, myself, EJ Boxing Live. We're here with Torino Johnson, middleweight contender, hoping to do big, great things in coming up on the Rock Nation show in New York. Torino, how are you feeling and, and how you feel? How, you, how, how have you prepared getting ready for the, your, your big night? Oh, well, you know, uh, that's the same old, same old, but a different animal right now. Uh, I'm excited. I just can't wait to get in the ring. It feels like it's been a long time coming. Mm, definitely, man. You've had like three rings on the trot as well, man. Your last fight was in the Bahamas. Um, the the fight I saw recently though was the one on ESPN, man, and that went to the decision. That was a close, gutty, gutty gritty fight. But I guess you needed that though to get a lot of things, you know, to get things um, back on track. Yeah. Oh, indeed. You know, uh, Gavonsky is his name, Mike Gavonsky from Washington, a very tough opponent, you know, a real nice guy. But, oh, my God, he, he was a, a match that put me to the road. But uh, I learned my lesson in that fight, and I'm looking forward to even doing much better in my upcoming fight, especially this one come January 9th. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely, man. Hey, it's going to be really good, man. So you, you're, this, you're on the, the new promotional thing of, of Rock Nation. How did that go about you guys getting connected? I know your, promote, your manager's Gary Shaw. How did that go about for you getting onto their card? Because that's a really big move for you guys, man. One of the best... Uh well, I must say, I really don't know how it came about with the Rock Nation, but I must tell you, it was a blessing in disguise, and I'm happy that it's happening. Uh, I haven't got the confirmation on anything as yet, but I must tell you, you know, it's a blessing, and I'm glad that, you know, Mr. Gary Show has been generous enough to allow me to fight on so many occasions to actually combine with, you know, such great, phenomenal folks like Mr. Jay-Z of the Rock Nation. It's, it's a big move, and I believe boxing can only go even further from here and on. Definitely, man. Rihanna's going to be there. Angie Martinez is going to be is going to be is going to be one of them with people speaking on the mic as well. So you've got loads of people in New York. I mean, New York, New York, the capital, the media capital of the world, and this is the one of the biggest stages. It's almost like this is for a world title. I mean, you're fighting for the WBC um, silver belt and the WBA um, international belt. That's right. Oh yes, indeed. You know, I'm fighting for both of those belts as well as I'm also defending my WBC continental title uh, of the Americas title. So yes, this is a big step for me right now. This is a no joke. I've said it before and I'll say it again. You can play basketball, play volleyball, you can even play football, but you can't play boxing. And uh, that's what I do for a living. And uh, yeah, man, I'm. This is what I'm doing, and I'm really serious about this. You're only gonna see more destruction out of Toriano come January 9th. <laughs> I hope so. Another thing as well, see your opponent, have you studied your opponent from Colombia? I mean, I've checked his record. The last, uh, he's lost against Arif Magdal, um from Russia. He got stopped in three rounds. But you've got more or less a mirror record. The only thing is that your fight with um, Stevenson, with um, with uh, Stevenson, was, uh, Kurt Stevenson was controversial. And obviously, you know, you won 11th rounds. And in the last round, obviously, you know, the, the controversy with the referee stopping the fight too early. I mean, but um, there was no controversy with um, Alex Othello when he got stopped by Magadoff in the third round. So it looks like, you know, this, this should be your night. It should be. I'm sure you prepared very well. Well, indeed, you know, this definitely is my night. Something got to be wrong with me if it doesn't be my night, you know. But uh, let's say uh, if Alex Rand win this fight, that means God just send down a lightning bolt from heaven to strike me dead. That's the only way Toriano's going to lose this fight. But indeed, I'm winning this fight, no doubt. Uh, Alex Rand, you know, if you said if I studied my opponent, indeed, you know, you could almost say I went to bed with him and all. I, I know what he eats, I know how he sleeps, I know how he moves. Yeah, I know him very well right now. Yeah, yeah. And then and I, I heard those, so this is the Rock Nation, I was listening to the Rock Nation conference call. So you're in line to either fight Triple G or, or um, 
or, or Koto. So which one would you prefer? If if I'm not trying to look, make you look past your opponent, obviously, because you know. But which one would you prefer? I, I mean, we I heard in the conference school you wouldn't mind fighting Triple G, and that's amazing. Now you know that would be a really good fight, you know. Oh, no doubt. You know, I give all the respect to Triple G. He's one of my favorite fighters. You know, before being a fighter, I'm a fan, and I'm a boxing fan at heart. Uh, Triple G is a great fighter. As long as Rigendo and Andre Ward, uh, they are my top three best fighters in the world. Uh, but indeed, to get an opportunity to fight Triple G, I believe it would only be fair for the public and the fans at large in the whole world to know that Toriano Johnson is the one to do the damage, is the one to win a fight against Triple G. He's the one to, to expose him. You know, Triple G is a great fighter. But he does have this flaws. So, hey, I believe it would be a phenomenal fight between myself and Triple G. But uh, looking at, you know, more likely fights, you know, against um, for the likes of Miguel Cotto and and uh, Canelo Alvarez, I believe, you know, that's already a winning hand for me. But, you know, I think a fight like that before a Triple G would be more likely to happen, which indeed would set me up to get a chance to fight the great Triple G. But uh, Canelo... And, um, and Miguel Cotto, indeed, you know, I feel as though I'm the one to, to go out there and to put the damage and to, to bring home the chair to win the fight. <laughs> so, yeah, I would like to get that chance to fight either one of those guys. I mean, that's a big payday for you, and, and it'd be great right, great for the Bahamas and great for yourself, man, all the hard work you put in. All right, I'm going to pass you over to my co-host, who's here, Boxing Beats and Rhymes. I'm sure he's got a few questions for you. Go ahead, Beats. Yeah, Torino, how you doing? I'm good. I can't complain. God been blessing me. Yes, indeed. God bless. God bless. So, three wins on the trot since the Stevens fight. That's determination. Most fighters, after a setback like that, they take ages out, but you got straight back on the horse. What made you decide to take that cause of action? Oh, you know, my promoter, he saw, you know, after the Curtis Stevens fight that, hey, he didn't like it, neither did I didn't like it. You know, uh, it was an unfair deal. Uh, he said, listen, we're going to get right back up on the horse. So, Riano, you're determined, you're eager, you want to be a world champion. We're going to make you a world champion. I said, yes, I'm down with that. That's what I want. And, hey, Gary Shaw saw to it, you know, along with my management team, that, hey, let's get Toriano fight. If you want to fight, let's get him in the ring with just about anybody who wants to fight him because it's kind of difficult even at this point to get opponents for even myself, which, and, you know, I don't understand. Well, I'm not on the receiving end of my punches, but hey, uh, yeah. it's kind of difficult to get opponents for myself. But hey, Gary Shaw said, let's get, get Toriano fight, and that's what he's been doing. I've had three fights since, and uh, going to make this one my fourth one. And hopefully, you know, after this fight, we get a big shot to get on the big screen for everybody to see just exactly who Toriano is and what he can do. Yes, Triple G is a really good middleweight, man. But I think um, with your fearlessness... Regardless of how it plays out technically, you know, I think you, you have the right mentality to go at Triple G. You have the right mentality to give him a real war. Oh, well, indeed, you know, and then there are a few more uh, to add to that, you know, besides my tenacity, the fact that, you know, uh, I have a knack for taking a good blow, I'm able to take good punches, you know, and uh, I'm also a bit technical in the ring when needed. And, uh, you know, I do believe, you know, I do have some heavy hands behind me at times, also, again, when needed. But, hey, you know, I believe I have the tools there is to beat a guy like Gandhi Golovkin, who is a very great and phenomenal fighter himself. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So, you feeling good for your fight on Saturday? Oh, indeed. You know, uh, come January 9th, this Friday coming, right here at the Madison Square Garden, I'm going to square it off with Alex Saran. And, uh, hey, you know, it's going to be a lovely fight, you know, as far as my eye can say. Too bad it may be just a little bit too gruesome for the fans them who, are, who are watching. But uh, I'm going to go in there and do damage. Toriano is coming over with a new message. And this message is that Toriano is only going to be a destructive force in the sport. Excellent, excellent. Great attitude, great attitude, man. So, what about Andy Lee? He just won a title. What if Andy Lee was to come calling? You'd be happy with that? Uh, and, you know, Andy Lee, he's also one of my favorite fighters. And, uh, yes, Andy Lee would be an awesome fight. And even a, the likes of David Lemieux, both out of the Commonwealth, you know, just as myself from the Bahamas, we're all in the Commonwealth jurisdiction. And it would be such a phenomenal moment for all of us to get an opportunity to say, hey, Toriano and a David Lemieux, Toriano and an Andy Lee, I think those fights are only 
in making that happen. So definitely, those are the road that I'm looking forward to taking a path on. You know, they say that Torian only has 70 and fight that does 70 and wins. I agree with them. I only have 70 and wins, but I believe that the caliber of fighter that I am, I'm a world champion already. So uh, hey, but if they said that I gotta go to the rope, gotta climb that ladder the way everybody else does, no problem. I'll do it. I'm not backing down from anybody. Whoever challenges me. Let them know that Toriano have never turned down a challenge from anybody. So, hey, I'm ready to go to anybody. Lemieux, Andy Lee, the Charlo brothers and all I, I'm very interested in. You know, let's make fights happen. Let the fans them see fights. You know, gone are the days when fighters fought champions, when champions fought champions. You know, even um, if I got to flip this in here, you know, for the likes of even Peter Quillen, whom I gave the, the name alias Peter Chicken, you know, uh, Ain't no champion is about to give up a title just because he's afraid to fight another fighter. Champions fight champions. And that's what Toriano Johnson is here to show. That I'm not afraid to fight anybody. Being a champion, I'm willing to fight champions. That's my job. My job is to show the fans that, hey, this is the kind of show y'all want to see. This is the show that I'm going to give. You know something? I was thinking about Peter Quill and I was going to ask you, but I said I better not because you might not want to talk about it. But you did, and you are 100% Correct. Wherever I interview Peter Quillen, you are, what did you think? What was the first thing that came to your head when you saw him give his belt up like that? That is a total dis embarrassment, a disgrace to the sport of boxing. The management and the organizers of Peter Quillen ought to sit down and regroup and capitalize on what they just went, what just happened that went wrong. There's no way in the world a champion would ever say that he's not going to fight. You know, and, and it's what the fans want. You don't go around telling fans I'm not going to give this fight because, you know, there's not enough money. In hey, if what fans want to see, you give it to the fans. I guarantee you, Toriano Johnson, if you ask me to fight, I'll fight. If it's fan worthy, I'm definitely fighting. Don't come here. First of all, I'm going to feed my family, no doubt. And then after that, hey, the fact that I'm going to leave a legacy, I'm going to be a legend. I fight champions. That's what champions are supposed to do. And I tell you, it's a black eye in the spot of boxing, and it's only going to be sad to know that boxing has to take that turn in the future, you know, where fighters say, I don't want to fight this person. Why? Because of money, because of risk, and all that. You. What is, it? what is it? You know, you don't want to fight. You're going to get your hip bust beat, but you want to get a few dollars for it. If that's what he's trying to say, it, it's sad, man. You know, hey, personally, I don't have a problem with uh, Peter Quillen, but the fact what he did to boxing, it just hurts my heart. I'm a fan first before I'm a fighter. And I tell you, it only hurt me to see a boxer do such a thing like that. Yeah. Yo. Definitely. Definitely. But the thing is, he, he's not actually like, it's been, it seems like a lot of the middleweights don't want to take Triple G on. I don't think Koto is in no worry, hurry to do it. I don't think Taylor or any of the other guys, they don't seem to be in too much of a hurry to take him on. I mean, what, why is why do you think this, I know he's good, but this is we're supposed to be seeing, you're supposed to be glad he, I mean, you, you, you're you calling him out. You want to do it. What's the difference? Oh, indeed. You? you know, hey, th this is what I do. You know, you can play basketball, play volleyball, you can even play football, but you can't play boxing. Boxing is a lifestyle. You know, this isn't something that you play with. You understand? This is my job and my lifestyle. Hey, my job is going there and fight the best, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to turn down any champion who requests to fight me when becoming a champion. Mm. Absolutely. Excellent. Absolutely. I was going to say to you, going into this fight, because I remember in the Stevenson fight, you felt like everything was against you. At the minute, it seems like the tide has changed. It seems like, you know, the promotion, obviously your manager's for you, but it seems like the promotional thing is, is for you. It seems like it's even playing field. Do you feel like you have to go in this, to look for the knockout or you're gonna, just going to, you know, you're more relaxed now, you can take your time? Because it seems like it's your stage to just do, you know, to implement your game plan rather than I have to, I have to prove yourself, you know, to get yourself in a dogfight and, and, you know, might get caught with something. How do you feel about that? Well, the fact is, you know, fighting uh, Alex Curtis Stevens, okay. you know, I believe though I was a bit relaxed in that fight. This coming Saturday, uh, this coming Friday, I won't be relaxed. Right now, this fight, <laughs> there is no relaxing in this fight. It is an all-out new Toriano, a much stronger, a much faster, a much smarter fighter come this Saturday. So, no, there is no pressure with the fact that I'm coming out even harder than I did before. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So, would you like the Stevens rematch, or are you just gonna let that go? Indeed. You know, hey, hey the Stevens re uh, rematch. The, the loss to Curtis Stevens, you know, is like the the World Trade Center collapsing down. You know, <laughs> it's like you know uh, 
the most devastating action ever taken place in the history of life. That's what had happened to me, and I might tell you, it does it still left a shocking uh, mark on me, but indeed, it has only made me stronger in, in the sport of boxing. Excellent, excellent. So, uh, have you contacted his people about trying to possibly make that happen? Oh, yes, you know, I believe he's interested as well, you know, uh, right now. I think uh, my management are trying to get the TV network to get involved. You know, apparently right now the TV networks aren't so interested. But uh, hey, hopefully we garner enough fans, you know, after this fight uh, to say, listen, we want to see a Toriano and a Curtis Stevens too. I am willing and able and be more than happy to make that happen, have the TV networks those come together and come to a reasonable agreement. Yeah, the first fight was a thriller, so we're looking for we look forward to that potentially happening in 2015. Definitely, definitely. Oh yeah, indeed, it definitely will be. I believe Curtis has stepped up his game. I believe Curtis is more of a fighter now than he has ever been, especially now that he knows he's, he may be fighting me in the future. So yes, indeed, Toriano's also stepped up his game, and hey, I'm ready, man. I'm just ready. This this Friday right now is the time. And I'm going to go out there and give it my all. My, it's going to be totally intense. Mm. Totally intense. Wow. This coming Friday right here at the Madison Square Garden. All right. Um, I've got UK boxing blogger here. Just going to finish up before we finish you, here, you know. So he's got a couple of questions. We're just going to mute. Go ahead, um, UK blogger. Yeah, how's it going, Serena? You all right? Oh, say that again. I didn't hear you clearly. Oh, sorry, man. How, how you doing? All right. Oh yes, I've been good. Can't complain. I'm I'm blessed. Of course, of course. Well, um, good luck for the weekend. Um, first question I've got: Which of the world champions at the moment you think things suited to your game and you'd like to fight first? Oh well, first of all, you know, before the world champions, you know, I believe for the likes of David Lemieux and Andy Lee, I believe that would be in good preparation to make those fights happen. And uh, and further on, you know, the win out of the Miguel Cotto and Canelo Alvarez, that'd be totally awesome. I believe that that should be in the making after after these few victories of mine. You know, uh, it would be great. It would be a phenomenal fight. I mean. The both of these guys are punchers, Canelo and uh, Miguel Cotto. So am I. You know, I'm an action-packed fighter. You're only going to see great action in the ring. Have me and either one of those other two fighters uh, collide into the ring. So yes, Miguel Cotto and Canelo will definitely be. They are definitely on my list to get in the ring with. So Sierra. And also, what, what do you think of Triple G? How would you approach that fight if you were to take on Triple G? Wow, you know that. That right there, you know, Triple G to me, you know, in my books, Triple G is the best. He is at the top. Uh, many out there may, may not see it so, but to me, Triple G is the best. And that is the guy who I would love to fight. That would be the pinnacle of the middleweight division for myself, to become a world champion of winning a fight over Mr. Uh, Gandhi Golovkin. That right there would be an honor. And I tell you, an honor would only come by the fact that I will win the fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you think you'll be able to um, we'll take the pressure and put punishment back to him and, and hurt him for the first time? Oh, yes. You know, I blame him. I'm the one to hurt him. I'm the one to beat him. I am the one. You know, I have the tools. You know, you give. I got the hammers. I got the screwdriver. I'm ready to go to do carpentry <laughs> work on Mason. Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, I want to see that fight. <laughs> Oh, yes. You know, as a fan, I would love to see that fight. I can guarantee you that fight would be an explosive one. I mean, he's a hard-hitting man, you know, and I'm a hand-throwing guy, you know. Imagine two guys going in there, that like a, not even a, a Marvin Hagler and a Sugar Ray Leonard. That, that's like a Tommy Hearns and a Marvin Hagler, and, and I'm the Marvin Hagler there. Wow, that would be one exciting fight. Someone would have to go. Hmm. Indeed, Someone. somebody got to go, and it ain't Toriano. <laughs> uh, yeah, I want to see that. Uh, yeah, well, obviously, I'm UK-based. Um, what do you think about We've got a strong middleweight scene over here. We recently had a big fight. It was a bit of a letdown, but, you know, for uh, Billy Joe Saunders versus Eubank Jr., um, the famous guy out of the two is obviously Eubank Jr. What do you think of him? Do you think he can come back again? Oh, my goodness. Listen, I don't. I, I watched Eubank. I thought it was a good fight. 
But uh, you just mentioned Billy Joe Saunders. He went to the Beijing Olympic with myself. And I must tell you, I've been following Billy Joe for quite a while. And I believe myself would be an awesome opponent for Billy Joe. Unfortunately for Billy Joe, it would just be another stepping stone for me to get uh, further in my career. But it would be a great fight. You know, uh, my, I'm standing on the side of my manager and I'm telling him, listen, we got to make this fight happen. We got to make this fight happen with myself and Billy Joe Sanders. Personally, I believe, you know, I'm a Bahamian. I would like to be the Bahamian champion. I'd like to be the Caribbean champion, as well as I'd like to be the Commonwealth champion, which Billy Joe Sanders has recently uh, had the Commonwealth title. I want to be one of them to hold that title, especially winning it over Billy Joe Sanders. So that right. fight right there in the making for me would be an honor as well. See, a lot of, um, especially American fight fans, um, or some guys that don't know Billy Joe too well, um, they seem to think like, Eubank Jr. like just flopped basically he lost to a guy that's unheard of like you, so in your your opinion Billy Joe Saunders is a legit world class fighter? I don't think Billy Joe Saunders is going to do well out of the British circuit. <laughs> I think I've mentioned that on several YouTube clips with him. And, uh, no, I don't think of him as such a credible fighter as far as an international fight. I think he's just good in the European circuit but uh... <laughs> Hey, the fact that if he's looking at Curtis to be not so much of a known fighter, I think he's looking at it in the wrong aspect. I believe a fight with even Curtis and Billy Joe Sanders, Curtis would beat him too. But uh, for sure, Toriano, you saw that fight. You know, it was a total unfair robbery for myself, but it ain't going to be like that ever again. Of course, yeah. Okay, well, thank you for, for, for giving me the time to ask you a few questions today. And good luck, man. And I hope to see you in some great, great fights in the future. Oh, yes. You know, I, I hope boxing picks up his game and allow champions to fight champions. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, um, Tyrio. We don't take up too much of your time. Um, so, hey, we, listen, we look forward to your fight this Friday against Alex Vildor, um from Colombia. Um, Farino Johnson from the, from the Bahamas fighting in New York. So he's going to obviously put on a spectacular show. And, hey, uh, Toronto, uh, if, any, if there's anything, if you've got time, I hope we get maybe get a post-fight interview with you about your fight, winning your championship, because we know you're going to win, and obviously it's a spectacular, um, spectacular style, and um, hopefully we catch up after the fight. Oh, that would be great. It would be, again, an honor, you know, to, to actually meet you guys in person. Oh, no. So, yes, it, it, <laughs> I'm in the UK. I mean, I mean on Skype, a post-fight <laughs> interview. That's what it means. <laughs> I would love to come to the fight, though, actually, but, yeah, you know, that's what I mean. Uh, it may be. You watch it on television, you just may feel a few of the punches coming to the screen. <laughs> All right. All right, to you. No, thanks uh, for your time, and we'll talk to you soon. Much appreciated. God bless you. Take care. All right, then, chap. See you. Bye. DJ Boxing Live here. DJ Boxing Live here. Must be Douglas Nightman. Must be Douglas. The fat pump. The legend. I mean, Yo, this is Chris Caban, chilling with my man DJ Boxing Live, one of the hottest, dopest boxing channels on YouTube. Check him out. The Bucks and Beats and Rounds on the EJ Live YouTube channel. And he was uh, the number 10 rating contender, and he had never been knocked down. And Sonny destroyed his mouth. But Thea lost most of his team, basically with one or two left hooks. Oh, shit, boy. What was look at? Kids sleeping like Manny Pacquiao. EJ Boxing Live here. EJ Boxing Live here.